Hello, this is my submission video for Fleet Fatale, the Fleet Fatale event that's coming up in November of 2020. I am Rhenium, and this is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for the Nintendo Switch. This is my current PB video. Um, it's a 129.23, and I have recorded over it with a better explanation of what's going on in the run to give an idea of what commentary would actually be like. So as I mentioned already, this is the Switch re-release, which came out um, two years ago. The original came out in 2014. Um, and I was somewhat involved in the community when people were running the game on Wii U and when it first came out, but I only started doing runs in spring of this year. Um, the Switch version is distinct from the Wii U version in that it adds funky mode, which this is a funky mode run. Funky mode is meant to be like the easy mode of the game, and it is a lot faster. Um, funky Kong is kind of like DK with a buddy Kong, um, but he mimics DK with all three buddies. So like Diddy and Dixie, he has a double jump. Um, it's, I guess, a little more similar to Dixie's in that it gives you both forward movement and upward movement. And like Cranky Kong, he is immune to spikes. Um, and he's also like DK with any of the buddies in that he has infinite roll, which is super important because every time you begin a roll, you lose some number of frames, less than a second, um, but it does add up over the run. Funky Kong also has an extra heart, which is useful for damage boosting. Um, there's really only one stage I can think of where that extra heart really comes in handy, but it also just makes it a safer run overall. Funky Kong is also, um, he's also helpful to have because he has a grab jump, um, which is not intended, but if you input a grab before you input a double jump, you get extra height. Um, I'll try to point out some grab jumps as they happen throughout the run, but you can also kind of see them because you can see him swing his arms forward before the double jump happens. Um, this run is any percent no DA, so I would say that this is probably the most popular category. And funky mode uh, is the only mode in which DA can be done. So if you die eight times, you're allowed to advance to the next level um, without completing the level. And that's taken advantage of in the true any percent category. At the beginning of 1-3 here, we'll see a grab jump. So. The intended strat to get up onto the platform would be just climbing up the vine that's to the left of it right at the beginning, but since that would be slower, um, I'm going to do a grab jump to get height onto the platform. So that was that. And there is like a vertical climb section here as well. Um, they don't happen a ton in the run, but they can be they can be somewhat difficult to optimize movement wise.
So 1-4 is the first of five auto scrollers that are in the run. The first two that we'll see are minecart auto scrollers, and then the last three are rocket barrel levels. The minecart auto scrollers do have binder optimizations. Um, the rocket barrel levels really only do in terms of um, like getting from the beginning of the stage to the barrel and then after to the end barrel. But the the minecart, if you jump up slopes or if you jump at the end, or if you jump up uphill slopes or you jump at the end of downhill slopes, then you can save a little bit of time. But for the most part, these are auto scrollers and they would be good opportunities for donation reading. So the World 1 boss is actually my favorite boss in the entire run. Um, I'm going to be switching from Funky to DK so that I can use Cranky Kong against him. Um, there are some super cool unintended early hits that you can do with Cranky that actually were not possible on the Wii U. Um, in the Switch re-release, Pompey's hitbox was made bigger and so it became possible to do it. So I'm going to pogo in the corner and I can hit him before he's in the half pipe with me. I can also use Cranky Kong to do some cool tech with these fish. Um, I was a little slow on that one and I actually don't make the second one, but there's other tech with, with different fish later as well. On these 4th and 7th hits, he does the little anger animation, so I have to wait a little bit before I get the early hit on him. Here I'm going to be damage boosting through the 8th penguin um, so that I can head right through Pompey when he comes in, but I don't have to wait for the animation of getting hit. And then here I'm going to be pogoing off this spike and then getting hit by the shield guy onto the fish so that I don't have to wait for it to touch the ground before I can hit it. I'm going to switch back to Funky Kong um, for all of Worlds 2 and 3, but we will see DK and some of the other buddies again in World 4. But 
here when I switch back to funky, my menuing is not as important because the world is already loading in in the background. Um, so it doesn't matter quite as much that I'm speedy with menuing. There's another vertical section coming up here. And off of this platform, I'm gonna be rolling and then doing a grab jump to make it onto the platform so I don't have to wait for the, I don't know what you would call that. So I don't have to wait for the platform I landed on to slide all the way down the rope. Two is the first of three Rambi levels that we'll see. And Rambi is the only animal buddy other than Squawks that's in this game. Um, and Squawks helps you find puzzle pieces, so we won't see him at all. Rambi is a little bit slower than Funky Kong or Donkey Kong by himself because his landing animation is a little bit slow. Um, and he's also just kind of finicky to control sometimes, so he's not super well liked. Um, not every runner uses Rambi in this level. Um, he's necessary in the third level he's in, and I do skip him in the second one. Here there are some swinging crates that I can get little boosts off of if I jump off them at the right time, which that was successful, the first one. And this one was also successful. And that one, I, I kind of messed up a little bit, so I have to run through at normal speed. On the Wii U, those boosts could be maintained for much longer because um, this was a Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong level, and in original mode, they can be maintained for much longer for that reason as well. Cranky's Pogo functions similarly to the double jump, but it can be done as many, as many times as you Pogo, and the speed is maintained throughout. Two, three is the first level where global cycles become super important. Um, there are leaves that are falling from the sky and then there are some horns that are blowing air. The leaves that are falling are not on global cycles, but the horns are. So there are a couple times where if I don't move through the level at the speed that I wanna be moving or worse, if I die and I have to start over at a checkpoint, the horn cycles will be off and there are a couple points where that can really screw me over. This is the first. I need that air to carry me onto the leaf, and then this is the second. If those horns aren't blowing air when I roll through them, I'll just roll off and die.
two four is the second auto scroller, so it would be another level that true any percent would skip. Um, and it is another good time for donation reading. Two five, I think, is an underrated level. Um, I think it's got a cool vibe. I like the balloons. And uh, after this first section here, there's a section where you go left, and that's actually the only time in the run where you'll see me go left. Two six um, focuses a lot on sliding on vines. There's a lot of sections where I'm just sort of riding on them, so it's sort of an auto scroller. But there are sections in between where I'm rolling through and have to work on or m make sure that I'm optimizing my movement. There's a little bit of a vertical section here at the beginning, and then there's a bigger vertical climb at the end. Also, while I'm on the vines, um, I get a little bit of a boost if I grab onto the vine at the beginning of it. And because Funky Kong has attachment, um, if I jump a little early, I get pulled onto the vine. So there's a section coming up where it'll be obvious that I'm trying to reach the beginnings of the vines. I'm going to damage boost through a blue hoots. 
right here. And I don't stop sliding on the vine when I take damage. So it is, it's faster to damage boost through there and to grab onto the beginning of the vine. Scowl is the World 2 boss. Um, every boss in this game takes 9 hits, 3 phases of 3 hits each. And in Scowl I think that's probably most obvious because those 3 phases take place on different levels of his nest or tower or whatever we're in. For each phase I'm going to work on well, for the first two at least, I'm going to work on keeping three eggs on the screen at all times so that I can one cycle each phase. So in the first phase here, those are the three eggs that I'm going to use to get three hits on him. If I were to miss one or accidentally roll through one of those owls or something were to happen, if two of them bounce into each other, um, then I would have to wait for the next cycle of that phase to come through. In phase two, that's more challenging to do. Um, so I'm going to bounce off the first egg and then hold on to it while I bounce off of these owls. Bounce off the second egg and then make sure that I'm killing these owls in front of it so that they don't run into him. I also have to make sure that I only land a hit on him after the third egg spawns. The third phase is the longest and most punishing if you miss a hit. Although the second isn't great either. <laughs> so some of these little viking owls are going to be eggs. I'm going to grab one and then bop the other so that he stays on the screen. And now that I've got one hit, I'm going to hold on to him. One of these eggs that falls down from the sky is going to have Scowl in it. But I'm going to hold on to my egg and I'm going to jump on him. And then the next time he comes on the screen, I'm going to throw the egg at him. Three one is a really popular level. It's the Lion King level. It's got, it looks great. It's got really cute music, so it's super popular. And it's really just mostly based on good movement. But there is there are two um, there are two cycles that I'm trying to make. So in the back of my mind right now, I'm thinking about the first 
uh, in the background that I'll be traveling into, there are some zebra and giraffe puppets. You can see them right now. And at the end, there's a blue zebra. So I'm moving with the intention of trying to catch the correct zebra cycle. Otherwise, I get to the giraffe and the zebra's running away and I lose time. These snakes are also um, I, I want to be mindful of the cycles that they're on as well. And there is a faster jump at the end that I don't do. Um, if you jump on top of this snake, you can get into the barrel a little bit faster. Two really doesn't have that much going on except for a good movement and at the end here even movement is relatively forgiving because the big durian that's chasing me can only move at the speed it moves and I have to wait for it here anyway so it's a little bit of a break Three three is the second of the three Ramby levels, um, but I find that it is faster and easier for me to not use him. There are tornadoes here that will push you forwards or backwards. They're on global cycles, so I'm playing keeping that in mind. And there's a really cool IL strat that can be done um, called Tornado Cido, where you get insane speed off of them. And then uh, you can use Cranky Kong's Pogo to maintain that speed.
three, four has an interesting part coming up at the end. Um, there are some fire droplets that fall from the ceiling that I may or may not take damage on. Um, and it's essentially RNG, but it's not quite RNG. It's based on roll oscillation. So essentially every time I start a roll, it's like, it's like I'm rolling dice. Um, and if I get, if I get snake eyes, then I end up taking damage. Um, so I did in that case, but sometimes you can move through the exact same way and you end up not taking damage on them, which saves a couple of seconds. Three five is going to be the first rocket barrel level that we see, and it is the simplest. Um, the ceiling doesn't damage you, so you can just hang out at the top. And there are three times that you have to let go of either A or B, whatever you use for the rocket barrel, and that's referred to as a hold A, hold A, or hold B, go P. But I like to go through and get coins and puzzle pieces and things because it keeps me interested. <laughs> I'm going to be taking the secret exit here so that I skip the second half of the level essentially and also so that I go into Bramble Scramble which is relatively quick. And 3B looks really cool because the level is forming in front of you um, so it's kind of a a cool showcase of what's happening but it's really no different to play than other levels that are about making sure that your movement is good Three boss is um, an interesting showcase of RNG manip in the game. So there really isn't any boss RNG on the Switch version. On the Wii U version, there absolutely was. So which enemies would have eggs in them in Scowl, in the third phase at least, where these monkeys would swing, um, and some stuff with the final boss, as well as Bashmaster actually. Uh, we're RNG dependent. Um, now, as long as my movement and placement are consistent, um, these monkeys' movement will be as well, which is really helpful. So, 
for instance, I'm standing where I am so that they'll swing down the right number of times or in the right places so that I can defeat them as quickly as possible. Here I'm going to hesitate before I roll into him to make sure that the third guy jumps down. Things like that. So in world four, I'm going to be using DK with a buddy the whole time. So we'll get to see some of the OG Kongs. Mostly I'll be using Diddy Kong because on land, uh, his jet pack provides a double jump in the water. His jet pack provides a boost, I guess. Um, so he's a much faster swimmer than any other Kong. When DK is alone in the water, um, this is the fastest way to swim, which is swim canceling. But I'm going to be getting Diddy right here at the beginning. And you can see how, how quick his jetpack makes him. So I'm going to be getting Diddy, or I got Dixie at the end because she can swim through these currents um, with her hair. I didn't make the correct cycle. So in original mode and on Wii U and when we're using DK with buddies, barrel cycles become important. Barrels are on global cycles. So you want to make sure that when you reach the barrel, it's the the buddy that you want. <laughs> um, on land, missing a barrel cycle costs you three seconds, and in the water it costs you six. Four A is a really cool level because you use all three Kongs in one level. It's the only time in the run when you do. It's also important for barrel cycles, but unfortunately I get mixed up a little bit at the beginning here and I don't make either of the barrel cycles that I want to. But I'm gonna be starting with Dixie because we ended with Dixie in the previous stage. I'm gonna get Diddy here so that I can travel through the underwater section quickly. And then I'm gonna to switch to Cranky at the end so that I can 
pogo onto some spike balls and get into the secret exit. I should have mentioned also that I take a secret exit in 4-1 to get here. Um, because when you take the two secret exits, there's one less stage that you have to do. On Wii U, there was a glitch called air swimming that could be done, where two Kongs could be separated when entering the water. And that was used on this stage to skip the entire thing, essentially. Um, but unfortunately on the Switch version, that's not possible. So I'm going to be using Diddy for basically my whole time here. Um, because the whole stage is underwater. And the basic idea of this one is collecting keys and matching them up with the correct colored chests. But beyond knowing the route, um, there are minor optimizations that can be done, um, not only in terms of swimming quickly, um, but also entering the portals there. Um, in specific ways. For instance, the one that I just entered, I went as far right as possible and then held right as I was coming out so that I would end up right at the green chest when I came out. Also, more so casually, being mindful of air is important in a stage that's completely underwater, but there are air bubbles in each of the chests as well, so as long as I'm moving as I should be, I, I should be fine, and I should refill my air whenever I get a new key, and likely won't run out in between. Four five is a really good showcase of Cranky Kong's pogo. going on these platforms um, although I'm kind of taking my time here because I was getting a little bit nervous this can be a, tr a really tricky stage if you're going all out
And then I'm going to switch to Diddy at the end so that I can bring him into 4-6. Or at least, ideally, that's what I'd be doing. <laughs> but I lost him. So I'm going to be starting with solo DK in 4-6. Four six is another stage that's basically entirely underwater. So it's another good time for Diddy to shine and I'll, I'll be getting him at the first opportunity that I have. But it's also um, a big stage for damage boosting because there's a lot of spiky balls around and swinging vine anemone tentacle things that are too slow to try to maneuver around. <laughs> I'm gonna get Diddy here, and at that point, we'll see the stage more so the way it's played in the run. Or the way it should be played in the run. And unfortunately, I have to wait for this barrel, so that's going to cost me about six seconds. I said Pompey was my favorite boss, but Fugu is probably my second favorite. He's really quick um, because you can just use Cranky Kong um, to smack him with a pogo stick or cane, whatever, pogo cane. Um, and I don't know, it's fun and he's cute. So uh, his hitbox is always behind him. So I'm going to be getting behind him and then damage boosting so that I can get hits on him before he does all of his stuff. I don't know, he shoots enemies at, and things at me if I, if I don't interrupt it. So he's a, he's a quick boss, which is fun. Now we're going to be heading into World 5. Um, and World 5 is cool because it, it tells a story as you go through it. So you start in Harvest Hazards, where fruit is being harvested. 
the fruit gets chopped up, it gets turned into juice, and then that juice gets turned into popsicles. <laughs> and you watch that happen in each of the stages as you go through. Five two is the second to last rocket barrel level and another great donation reading opportunity.
So 5-3 is when the fruit has been harvested and is now getting chopped up so it can be made into juice. And other than a couple of jumps that skip platforms like these, um, the only other thing to be aware of is the conveyor belt thingies. Um, some of them push you forwards, some of them push you backwards, so it's important to try to land on the ones that push you forwards. Here I'm going to be grab jumping to bop off the enemy, and I got kind of stuck to him. I don't know if that was attachment or what, but normally I can just bop off him and get on the platform. Five four is when the fruit's been chopped up and it's full on juice now. <laughs> this is another stage that's mostly just dependent on movement optimization. And I was a little slow getting into the water there, which is why I ended up taking damage on those. Normally, you should be able to move through that without running into the spike balls. I'm going to be taking a secret exit here so that I can get into 5B. Five five is a really cute level, actually. If you ever play this game casually or if you run 100%, um, it's adorable, but 5B is a lot faster. And 5B is like the level for global cycles. So there's a bunch of platforms moving around. Um, they're moving in and out from the background. And unfortunately, I take a death right at the beginning here, and all the cycles are off at the beginning for me. So you get to see what happens when the platforms aren't on cycle. <laughs>
Um, this is an attempt for me to get things back on cycle. So I know that if that button is moving upwards and I hit the very top of it as it just starts to move up, then I should be able to move through this fall here damageless. And I did, but unfortunately I still miscalculated. <laughs> Five six is when we get to the actual frozen part of Tropical Freeze. So the juice is being turned into popsicles and there's snow around and it's the first time that we see ice physics and ice physics manipulation. So there are a couple points where if you roll and jump um, after getting a little boost on the ice, you can maintain your speed, maintain extra speed for a little bit of time. So I'll point that out when it comes up. And that's gonna be right here. and it would be there if I didn't take damage. The boss of World 5 is Bashmaster, the bear. He looks like the Coca-Cola bear. And he, an inch, like a, a cool thing with him is like as you, as he takes each of his nine hits, he gets knocked into the water and he turns more purple. And a, another fun thing to notice is um, if you look at the background of this stage, you can tell that the stage is actually rotating as you're playing. I mentioned the removal of boss RNG in the Switch version, and this is one of the times when that comes up. These little ice cubes um, on Wii U, they had bombs in them, or coins, or hearts, or nothing, and it was that was based on RNG. Now it's the same order every time, which makes things a lot more predictable.
So now we're into the third phase, and if I remember right, I'm unfortunately going to mess up one of these hits. Yep. So I will have to wait for one extra, one extra cycle. He's not quite as, he's not quite as punishing as uh, some of the other bosses, though. So that could have been the last hit, and I'll have to wait and get one more on him. So now we are back on, we don't get to see the opening cutscene of this game, we skip that, but we are back where we began on Donkey Kong Island, but it's frozen over. And I've never played Returns, but I've heard that each stage represents a different world from Returns as you play through. So if you have, maybe you'll notice some, some nods to different worlds in Returns. You can get a little bit of boost off of that platform there, if you jump off at the right time. At the end here, the intended way to get through is to grab onto the like frozen grass platforms and work your way down, but you can just roll off, get to the barrel much faster. Six two is another favorite stage for me. Um, I don't really know why. I just like I just like the movement through it. It does have some kind of cool damage boosting as well. The water, I guess, is supposed to be too cold. So if you jump in it, you get pushed back up onto a platform. So there's one point where we take advantage of that by bopping on some hoots, and then as soon as we're closer to the right platform, we drop in the water and get shot over into it. And that's right here.
6-3 is another one that's all about good movement and making good use of the double jump, um, which is going to allow me to skip over some platforms. And then here I'm going to grab jump instead of landing in that barrel and go straight to the barrel that takes me to the end. Six four is our last auto scroller and it is a slightly scary one because there is no health throughout the entire stage. Um, but it's still not super crazy and probably the last good donation reading time. And 6-4 is also cool because it's sort of like the prelude to 6-5, um, which I think a lot of runners would agree is one of, if not the hardest, stage in the run. 6-5 has these platforms that swing back and forth that have the icy grass on it, um, but if you pound on them, you get shot forwards or whatever direction they're facing. And you can maintain that speed that you get shot forward with by bopping on enemies or snowflakes that are falling from the sky or utilizing the double jump. So there are three boosts like that throughout 6.5. In my PB, I do one and a half of those three. Um, the first one is going to be right at the beginning here. I'm going to grab jump up onto that platform and then the boost is going to be basically right now. That end part was a little bit scary because my roll did get eaten off of that platform. That happens sometimes and sometimes that results in a death, but in this case it did not. 
If I were doing the full second boost, I would have started already. But I'm going to do the mini version, which happens right here. And if I were to do the third boost, it would start right there. But instead, I'm just going to be trying to move quickly, bounce on enemies and snowflakes to make my way through to the end. And in my past PB, I had died to, I think, both the first and second boost, so... I was back on pace at this point. Although there are three, I believe, silhouette levels in Tropical Freeze, we only see one in the Any% percent run, and this is it. The silhouette levels are just really nice to look at, so I'm glad any of them are included. And here I'm going to just walk off the platform instead of waiting and climbing around on the inside of that grass because the barrel is actually right down there. That'll shoot me right up to the end. Six seven is probably other than six two my other favorite level. Um, there are these electrified platform and I don't know bug zapper looking things all over, and this is like the damage boosting level. It's got good music too.
six eight is the last level before the final boss and it is our last Rambi level it's the only one where you have to use Rambi the whole time and it's when the frozen Donkey Kong Island turns into the inside of the volcano so it gets fiery and full of lava this is an, an incredibly tricky level but the lava is an instant kill, which can be a little nerve-wracking. Because there won't be a lot of time in the final boss for me to say this, I'll say now. Um, this is a really great game. Um, this is a really, I think, a really fantastic game for new runners. Um, there are tons of great resources. Um, there's a really great tutorial that was made by DKS. There's a really nice community. And the game has built-in ILs, which makes it really fun and easy to practice. Also, thank you for watching my video. Alright, so now we're going to head into the final boss. His name is Frederick. Um, and I guess the basic idea of what happens is that there, he's in the background and he's shooting enemies at me. I throw one at him and that brings him to the foreground with me. At which point he runs past me three times. And those are my three opportunities to get hits on him. If I don't get all three of those hits, we start over from the beginning of that phase. He goes back into the background. Sometimes he does stuff in between. On the second and third phase, he does. So he's a somewhat challenging boss and a very punishing boss. So these are gonna be my first three opportunities to get hits on him. He's going to move in the first phase at a slow speed all three times. And I did get all three. And if I were to miss one of those hits, I would have to wait for all of this to happen again and for him to shoot enemies up, throw them back at him again. In the second phase he moves at three speeds, so he's going to move at a slow, medium, and then fast speed. And this I think is the biggest time loss if you miss a hit.
The way those platforms fall was RNG on the Wii U, but on the Switch version we always get the fast platform falling, which is nice. And so now I'm going to do this again. And then I'm going to have the three opportunities again. It's a little bit like the uh, final Bowser throws in Mario 64. So this time he's going to be going at the fast speed all three times. And unfortunately, <laughs> I miss all three. But the third phase is slightly less punishing, actually. Because he's going to, these platforms are going to fall. And then he's going to shoot some ice dragons at me. And then he's going to run by three times again. So I get three more opportunities to hit him. And I made all of those. So thank you again for watching my submission video. Um, this game's a blast to run and I would love to be able to do it in a marathon setting. Um, and hopefully, hopefully I'll be in communication with you in the future. Thank you so much.